conference today for a number of reasons. One is to announce that we are going to march again on the south side this evening. We're going to begin here at the Freedom House at 6 o'clock. And we're going to take the same route that we took last night. We're going to cross the Mason-Dixon line. That's a 16th Street Viaduct down to Lincoln Avenue and again to Kosciuszko Park. Now, the commandos were over trying to get a permit to use the park again tonight, but uh, no success. What happened there, Ed? Uh, he said get some other channels, or he had to go through some other channels? Yeah, there was a lot of red tape and a lot of beating around the bush, and what we got, he just does not want to give us a permit. All right, he does not want to give us a permit. We're going to Kosciuszko Park tonight with or without a permit. We're also uh, considering going to St. Josephat's Basilica uh, to pray, because we're not allowed to pray in Kosciuszko Park, you see. That's uh, against the law. That's a religious gathering. But we're going to St. Josephat's Basilica, and we hope to pray there with our brethren from the south side. What if the mayor doesn't uh, ask that the National Guard get called out? We will march anyway, and if anyone gets hurt in that line, and uh, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. In other words, it's the mayor's fault. The commandos will protect the picketers as well as we can. But when you've got eight thousand screaming whites like you had last night, uh, this isn't easy. These shouting, we want slaves, and we're supposed to go to Vietnam and fight for that. Huh? Father, in view of the tension you saw there last night, do you think it's wise to continue the demonstration? We're going to exercise our constitutional right to picket and to protest. Uh, we have tried every means possible to bring fair housing legislation to the city of Milwaukee. And we're going to continue to march. Father. It's up to the government of this city and of this state to see to it that we can exercise our constitutional right of freedom of speech. And we're going to exercise that, regardless of what the danger. We'll die for that right. Father, are you going to the Basilica first to pray and then to the shoes so far? Well, that depends upon that depends upon the permit. We haven't worked out the mechanics of the demonstration yet, but we'll be going to both places. Father Grappi, last Amen. night uh, you called on the Archbishop to uh, chastise every uh, white Catholic priest. On the well, I don't know what I call on the Archbishop to do, but I will say this, that the Archbishop came out and talked about the moral implications in fair housing legislation. He said that a man cannot discriminate. He reiterated the statements of Pope John. He came out very strong. But what I can't understand is what those men out there are doing. Now, I'm not saying that the Ar that the Archbishop is at fault in this, that he should uh, uh, demand that everyone preach on fair housing legislation or whatever it is. Those men are supposed to know that. Not by men, do you mean? I mean the pastors and the ministers that are living in that area. They're, supp they're supposed to be preaching about the moral implications involved in discrimination, but they aren't doing it. Those people go to church every Sunday. They ought to know their job. For heaven's sake, they ought to not be waiting for the archbishop to come and take them by the hand and show them how to cross the street. They ought to know that. Mm. Father, the archbishop has also made it clear that uh, priests and ministers have the right to march. Right. Well, they should have known that in the mm -hmm. beginning. Mm -hmm. Father, what One about Mayor Meyer's uh, attitude regarding the fair housing uh, ordinance? Oh, we don't agree with them. The, the, look, it has look. a citywide ordinance would do nothing more than hasten the exodus yes. to the uh -huh. Sure. We agree with Mayor Meyer that there should be a housing ordinance on a county-wide basis. In fact, the Youth Council may very soon be marching in some of the suburban communities that do not have fair housing legislation. But we think that the mayor is also passing the buck. We need fair housing legislation here in the city of Milwaukee. And he's always talking about the, the federal government, the state government, and the county, and he never talks about Mayor Meyer and his city of Milwaukee. The mayor Meyer is the mayor of the city of Milwaukee, and he ought to be working for fair housing legislation right here. Governor, right. Sure someone, someone comes sure. to me. Someone comes to me and uh, with a problem. I don't say, well, I can't do anything. I'm not pope or I'm not archbishop. I work in the capacity of my office, and it's the same thing with the mayor in the city of Milwaukee. He shouldn't be talking about the governor consistently, or about the county consistently, or about the federal government consistently. He ought to be talking about Mayor Meyer and his city of Milwaukee. How long do you plan to continue this administration? And this will be determined by the commando body. <laughs> Strategy and tactics are discussed every night after the demonstrations. Uh, and who did you see carrying a permit? Kurtz, K-U-R-T-Z, and he's good, man. They study everything. You know that? We're, we're tired of that. We want action. And we're, last night, we're man. We're telling you what we need. Right. And we're what we need. Last night, man, with that police protection, <clears throat> I just want to say one thing on that, man. Now, Father Grappi was at the head of the line. Everybody out on the south side, it seemed, fell in love with him, you understand? And, um... He asked for a permit to walk down the street, to march, you understand, to have a parade in the streets. 
They denied him the right to march in the street. You understand? Okay. So what happened? When we got out there, and all them white people out there, I don't know if you want to call them bigots or what you want to call them. It's up to you. You understand? But anyway, then all of them got next to us, and the man says, march in the street. So Father Gwabi said, well, look, we asked for a permit to march in the street. We couldn't. We couldn't even get it. So the man says, well, go ahead. The policeman said this. Go ahead up through them without protection. Remember this, he always got protection. So have those marches. Because the police force, with somebody like Chief Breyer leading them, if you want to start a riot, put a man in office like Breyer. If you want to stop one, take him out of office. If you want a stupid cat up there to lead you, you put him up there and let him lead you. The black man knows what he has to do. Don't nobody have to tell him that. And the black man's going to do it. Now, you wanted to call the National Guards in over here because a few black people got out there and burned up a few houses. Will you call them in when 5,000, uh, 8,000, well, 8, white bigots or anything else you want to call them, throwing comes out there and throws at little kids and women? Balls. And you call them heroes, man? Right. You me. take Kosciuszko and kiss him, you hear? Because yeah. to me, he was, he was a professional, a he was a, a professional killer. He was a mercenary. Now, if the black man doesn't go out there in the streets, and have a lot of fun, I don't know what he should do. Because every man that was in that riot, I admire him. I want to ask the press here something, because I'm, I'm definitely concerned. When we had a disturbance here in the black community, you had those cameras all over the place, and you had this news media all over the place, and you reported every window that got broke. But last night you looked on television and no one saw those white bigots out there screaming, we want slaves and niggers go home and everything else. I want to ask, what was the reason for that? I watched Channel 6, I didn't see a thing. And I understand Channel 12 had very little on. That's white power. In other words, it's a white man's press. That's what it is. So you're wasting your time here tonight also. That's correct. I've been back there many times and got the reaction I expected. White, segregated, Culturally, pri culturally deprived. Well, see, I didn't, I didn't expect this to myself because I thought that Milwaukee was a nice city because we like we it here. Like it here yes. We'd yeah. all greet you yeah. in love, love and, and, yeah, yeah. and all that jive, man. Let me tell you something. Well, Chris Seraphim the said South it. Side. Seraphim live on the South well, Side. Well, no, no, no. Seraphim he said should. that this is not, he said he this is not Selma, Alabama. He we should. have fine racial relations here. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right, okay. Let me tell you something, well, man. In the beginning, man, I want to condemn the police force, and I hope that Chief Breyer, if you want to call him a chief, because he's the top of the Indians, you understand, I hope that he's listening. Man, you ain't got nothing for a police force. You got people out there, man, that it's 200 of us, of us and about five or 8,000 of them, and you watching us. What's wrong with you and your boys? You're crazy? Huh? You gonna watch us? We're not doing nothing but walking and talking. See, they throwing the bricks. We come out there with love and with our hearts open and our minds open. You understand? Love we love everybody. They love it. I don't. Get that straight. I don't love everybody. Because when a bigot throws a brick at me, I don't love him. You understand? And when they send them wild dogs across that street to bite me, I'm going to cut his throat. And that's the same way I feel about them out there. Well, that's good Christianity. That's self-defense. I know, I know that's good Christianity. It's going to be that. It's going to be that.